benefits of cytorectal surgery, um, you know, for an ovarian cancer optimal outcome, we want a good surgery in response to chemotherapy. And the goals of surgery, I think, are a, a couple fold. One is you want to get a full disease assessment because the CAT scan, PET scan, MRI, they're not going to tell you the whole story. So you want to be able to, to get into a person's abdomen and see and visualize exactly how much tumor she has and where it's located. And then the goal of the surgery, once you assess that, is really to resect all visible disease that you can see or feel, whether it's in the omentum, the spleen, the liver, on the diaphragm, um, down in the pelvis. So with a lot of patients that we'll see with advanced stage ovarian cancer, especially with the high CN125, patients who have multiple peritoneal nodules, they'll have a lot of tumor studying potentially on the liver, on the diaphragm, they'll require diaphragm strippings. At times they'll require small bowel resections as well as large bowel resection, whether it's a, a rectosigmoid colectomy because the ovaries are down in the pelvis. So at times you may find patients who have cancer on their ovaries, cancer on their uterus, as well as down low in the pelvis surrounding the, the colon. And you still wanna be able to go after and surgical resect all that disease. So when you complete your surgery, you can inspect the small intestine, you can inspect the large intestine, whatever residual surfaces that are remaining to ensure that there's no residual disease. We always like to think that the earlier you do the surgery, the better the outcomes. And again, there's different philosophies on how to do this. Um, how I was trained, and I think a lot of people think, is you wanna go ahead and start with primary debulking surgery. You wanna operate people, patients as early as you can. You wanna make sure and get them to microscopic disease. Sometimes we call that R0, sometimes people call it R1, but the bottom line is, is that I think it's in the description of what you leave. You can say that I surgically resected all the disease on the diaphragm, the liver, the spleen, down in the pelvis, there is no evidence of disease left, basically microscopic. That should be the goal, is to try to get the patients to, um, to, to having no residual disease. Again, you always have to temper your surgeries. This patient was 70, she was healthy, um, so you can be a little more aggressive, but at times you may have somebody who's 75 who has multiple medical comorbidities, and that your operation time may lead to you know, deconditioning. There are studies out there that try to look at other risk factors such as preoperative albumin, to try to help stratify you know, how aggressive you should be with your surgery. And then when you think you may need to be too aggressive with the surgery, consider doing um, chemotherapy, so new adjunct chemotherapy to um, chemically cyto reduce these patients to go ahead and, and get them prepared so you can do an optimal cyto reduction uh, after three or four cycles of chemotherapy. I think when you look at um, patients with this advanced stage disease, some patients will get primary debulking new adjuvant chemotherapy as well. And um, where you do the new adjuvant chemotherapy, some patients will get three cycles of chemotherapy, some people will get four cycles of chemotherapy. That's gonna be up to the physician to see how those patients are responding to their treatment. And again, there's a study out of Canada that looked at using primary cytoreductive surgery, followed by, or I'm sorry, new adjuvant chemotherapy, followed by debulking surgery, and then actually using combination intraperitoneal intravenous chemotherapy. And this patient who's 70 years young, had stage four disease, was not optimally cyto reduced. She was not a candidate really for a combination intravenous intraperitoneal chemotherapy, but there are many different ways we can approach these patients to try to get them through their, um, you know, their surgery as well as their chemotherapy. When I see folks, when I see patients in the office, I tell them, you know, it's, it's a stepwise process. You wanna get a good diagnosis, get them through their surgery, start chemotherapy, get them through their chemotherapy. And really the goal should be to get the patients into remission. Remission is defined as no evidence of disease based by CAT scans, CN125s and physical exams. So to me, we see the patients, we give them the differential diagnosis, we plan their treatment, whether it's surgery followed by chemotherapy or new adjunct chemotherapy, and then we wanna get them into, into a complete remission. That should be our goal.